we'll talk today about creating F sharp web applications using SafeStack. My name is Tomasz Heimowski and I'm available at T. Heimowski at Twitter or GitHub if you'd like to reach me. And I work for IHS Market Company, which happens to be the sponsor of this uh, event. Slides are available at given URL, and I've also commented on the Huva app uh, this URL, so uh, you can reach them if you like. Uh, but there won't be so many slides because mostly today's session will be live coding uh, demo, so keep fingers crossed. And uh, I'd like to make the uh, questions at the end because we've got pretty a lot of to cover. Okay, and a disclaimer first. Uh, I'm not a web developer, so there might be some things that I don't feel fully understand from today's talk, uh, especially <laughs> uh, regarding uh, tools that are working on the front-end side. Uh, but anyway, I decided to do this talk because when I first encountered SafeStack, it was really appealing to me how fast and easy you can create uh, web applications using f and SafeStack. Uh, so that's why I'm here. And my goal today uh, is to uh, show you the development uh, uh, process, so uh, I think it's very nice, and to encourage you to try Safe, SafeStack and f -Sharp afterwards. And we won't manage to cover all the possible details of SafeStack because of the limited amount of time. Uh, okay, so what exactly does SAFE mean? Uh, this is just uh, an acronym for a web stack, and we already know such acronyms in our industry. For example, we've got MinStack, which uh, uses uh, JavaScript on both front-end and uh, back-end. Then there's also LAMP, and uh, some folks decided to add Perl and Python in addition to PHP, so that it just looks a bit more cooler. And talking about PHP, I've also heard that Haskellers have their stack, but they need an acronym for it. <laughs> anyway, back to SAFE. Uh, this is a, a web, f -sharp web stack which combines several open source projects. And what's, it, what's important is that it's F-sharp end-to-end, and it's type safe by nature, because using F-sharp everywhere. And it's flexible, meaning that you can switch up certain components with different if you like, and that's fine. <coughs> okay, so now let's decode uh, the safe acronym letter by letter. And first we've got S, which stands for Suave, uh, which is origi originally the component of safe. And it's a standalone, lightweight, and composable web server. Um, but if you don't like Suave, you can change it to any other f -sharp alternative, like Giraffe, which sits on top of dot, uh, ISP.NET Core, or a brand new project called Saturn, which abstracts over the Giraffe. And there's also Freya. And if you're familiar with uh, Erlang World, then it looks like web machine. Uh, then we've got E for Azure, which is a cloud provider from Microsoft. And of course, you can use your own alternative here, but I guess because both f -sharp and Azure come from uh, Microsoft, uh, that's the reason why Azure is by default here. And then we've got F, uh, which stands for Fable, and this is a fabulous project. It's an f -sharp to JavaScript compiler, and it's powered by Babel, meaning that you get a brand new ECMAScript standard JavaScript, which looks really nice and readable, uh, while it's still Babel uh, maintains backward compatibility, compatibility with older browsers. And last but not least, we've got E for Elmish, which is basically a user interface library, and it's highly inspi inspired by Elm language. And in fact, if you're familiar with writing apps in Elm, uh, it will look very similar to you. Uh, it will feel very similar to you writing apps using f -sharp and Elmish, how you do that in Elm. To sum up, SAFE stands for four uh, for projects. We've got S for Suave on the back end, then A uh, for Azure uh, Cloud Provider from Microsoft, then we've got F for Fable, F -sharp to JavaScript compiler, and then we've got a E for Elmish, which is a user interface library sitting on top of Fable. And our demo today uh, will be based on a simple voting form. So we'll create a simple voting form where you can uh, select a score, uh, type in your comment, and, uh, and uh, sign in with your name, and submit to the server and see the results of other people voting. And uh, I plan to make this app vote for my session today. So if everything goes fine, uh, we should be able to deploy the app at the end of the session, and then you will be able to vote for my app 
for my session using this app. So let's see how to create safe projects from scratch. <coughs> and as a project visit, you will need to have installed .NET SDK version 2, which is a cross-platform tool. In addition to that, for the front-end stuff, you need Node.js and a package manager, be it Yarn or NPM. And for the moment being, you also need .NET Framework on Windows on, or Mono on Mac or Linux for the build process, but open source uh, community is already working on tools that will re remove that dependency in future. And in practice, uh, we need to install the safe template. So that's one way of doing things uh, with safe. And we do that by the .NET uh, new command. Uh, then we can trigger a .NET new safe having the template installed. And then we trigger the build process using build script uh, and wait up until the build finishes and the app opens in browser so that we can start developing. So let's see that in practice. Okay, uh, I've already created uh, the project from the template uh, invoking .NET safe and uh, passing in a couple of uh, important parameters there. Uh, we'll just uh, uh, talk about them. Uh, uh, a bit more later. And if I open it in my editor and I trigger the build process so that it runs in the background. And while we're waiting for the build to finish, let's maybe talk about uh, a bit about the architecture of the solution. So uh, we've got like three main components here. We've got shared code, uh, which shows the code between the server and client side. Uh, then we've got server side code, uh, which uses Suave as well as client-side uh, client code, which uh, makes use of uh, Fable and Elmish, uh, as, uh, as well as React. Okay, can you see uh, in the back uh, the code, or should I? Not really, okay. How about now? Better, cool. Uh, okay, so let me just briefly go through the, uh, through the architecture over there. So in the shared module, we've got a tape alias for integer called Cantor. And then we've got some logic for routing URLs between the server and client for our API. And then we use Fable remoting library uh, for communication between server and client. And for that purpose, we created a Cantor protocol, which has a single method called getInitCantor. It takes no parameters, so this is denoted uh, by unit type. And then we return async of a Cantor. Uh, so async is like an I/O or future in F sharp. Uh, so this is the communication channel between server and client. Uh, keep in mind this is not really RESTful uh, because do we have some question? Uh, yep. Okay. Now? Okay. Cool. Uh, so keep in mind this is not really RESTful. Uh, if you'd like to expose your APIs to third parties, then I would probably have to stick with something else, but for our use case today, this will be just fine. And also in shared code, you can imagine that you, have, uh, you can have some validation uh, logic uh, that could work both on client and server side, which is pretty cool, uh, but we won't uh, do this today. Uh, okay, so going to the server side, uh, with, there's some code for configuring the Suave, and uh, we've got a function get init counter, which basically hard calls number 42. And then we glue that up in our init function, which is a web part. And web part stands for a basic building block, it's Suave. And we implement the counter protocol passing the implementation of the function and use a Fable Remotic adapter to, uh, to make it work. And then we compose the init web part together with other web parts, which are basically rules that you would see in a standard web application. And finally, trigger start web server, uh, passing the configuration as well as the web part that we have there. And for the client side, uh, that's what's, what's compiled to the JavaScript, and uh, it works in my browser over there. Uh, so we use for this uh, the Fable compiler to JavaScript, and on top of that, we've got Elmish together with uh, React elements. And I tried to briefly explain the uh, Elm architecture because it's pretty simple. And to implement LM architecture here, we've got a type called model, which denotes all the possible, like a whole possible state within our app on the client side. 
And for now, this is just an counter option. So option is like maybe. So we can have the counter or may not, which we initially don't. And we want to fetch the counter from the server. And message type corresponds to every possible action within our app on, on the front end. So we can increment the counter, we can decre decrement the counter, or uh, we've got also the init message, which uh, corresponds to communication with the server. If uh, the server responds with OK, then we've got uh, the success result uh, with the counter. So the result type over here uh, denotes that something can uh, succeed uh, or go wrong, uh, in which case we get the uh, type denoted by exception here. So this is the message. Then we've got a server module which basically creates a proxy from the client to the counter protocol on the server side. Then we've got init function which stands for creating the initial model and uh, initial comment to invoke. And initially we want to, the counter to be none. So if you can see, if I refresh the app, the counter for a, for a millisecond will be just loading and it just immediately loads the counter from the server. And the comment that we want to trigger initially will be get the init counter from the server. And then in case it succeeds, we want to map it to OK case and init. And the, for this operator over here is just composing functions in F sharp. Uh, so this is for the init function. Then we've got active function, which basically takes our current state, our current model, and the next incoming message and computes the next state of our app, so the next model. And we do this by pattern matching on model and message. And in case we've got the increment message incoming, we want to increment the counter and the same uh, with the decrement. So whenever I click on plus button, the counter increments, and the same when I click minus button. And when we got the init, a message incoming, we just want to initialize our model to sum of x. So this is the update function. Then we've got some fancy stuff for, uh, for the UI. So we've got, for example, save components value, which basically are credits to, to the uh, components used by uh, this template. And then there's some also uh, React elements corresponding to those uh, elements at the top. And finally, we've got container box uh, with the buttons uh, plus and minus. Uh, which use the dispatch function to pass the increment or decrement message correspondingly. Uh, so dispatch function is, uh, is a function that we pass to our model, uh, to our UI, sorry, uh, to dispatch messages from the user interface itself. And we glue that app together uh, using view for the whole view of the app in, on the uh, client side. And using init update and view functions over there, we can create an L mission app uh, using make program and then uh, also apply the React uh, component uh, and some tracing for, for development experience. So uh, this is it for the architecture. We saw how we can write, write shared code between server and client side. We saw how to use uh, Suave on the server side and on the client side we used Fable as together with Elmish and React uh, for our front end. Okay, so let's proceed to building the actual form. And to build the form, we'll use uh, Bulma framework, which is uh, like uh, Bootstrap from Twitter. This is a CSS framework, and it allows you to use some certain components or elements to build uh, the user interface without deep knowledge of CSS or web design, uh, which is good for dummies like, like me. And then we use uh, Fulma, uh, which are basically F-sharp uh, bindings for Bulma elements in the Elmish, so I get uh, static typing and IntelliSense in my editor for that. And uh, together with that, you use landing Bulma template, which uh, gives us this nice uh, view for, for, the, uh, for the front end and the picture in the background, which changes every time I refresh the app, and together with some elements uh, at the top. And finally, we've got Webpack, which bundles up the application. And we use also Webpack Dev Server, so that whenever I change something in my sources, the app refreshes in the browser and corresponds uh, to those changes. OK, so for example, if I uh, change template label to demo here, uh, it should reload in the background, recompile, and now I can see in my browser that uh, the label uh, refreshed. Uh, so what I want to do uh, is to change one slight thing in the CSS to make it more mobile friendly later, uh, just more concise. OK, and now. I want to remove the safe components because I won't need them anymore. And now I want to replace that with a single simple string, score my talk, 
at lambda days 18. And what else? I want also to add uh, lambda days logo to, to my app. And I've created, uh, I've prepared a URL for, for, a, for a nice logo, so I just copied that to image source value and use a built-in uh, bullmark component called uh, level. And the level is basically a uh, level is basically a component that allows you to center uh, an item within uh, horizontally. Uh, so I will use that for the image. And uh, this is also image from the Bulma uh, framework. And finally, I can use image from the HTML together with source attributes set, so it's set to our image source. And this should give us the Lambda days logo over there. Uh, it's quite big, so let's probably make it a bit smaller by using a built-in class uh, 64 by 64, which corresponds to the pixels, and make it a bit, bit uh, smaller, which is uh, uh, better right now. Okay, next thing I want to do is to remove the contents of the container box over here. Just make it empty for now. And uh, now before creating my form, I want to uh, open new namespace for the form elements and just a helper function called field with an input argument uh, which allows me to uh, reuse uh, those components for all of my fields and make it look nicer. And having that in place, I can proceed to create my first uh, first input, which will be comment, and we'll use the model as well as the dispatch function. And this will be a simple text area uh, with a placeholder comment and no contents for now. And we can now invoke our field function together with the comment passing in model and dispatch. And if I click save, it should refresh and open up the comment within the box. Let's do the same for name field. And for name, we'll use input of type text. And there are other input types, if you like. And uh, same story here. We'll use a placeholder code with name. and add this to our form. So we've got comment, we've got name, and what else? I need a submit button, because every form needs a submit button. So let's add that as well. And for submit button, we'll just use a simple button uh, with a string inside submit. And let's add this to the form. Okay, so this should give us the submit button, but uh, it's quite small, so maybe let's do this. Uh, let's make it uh, full width by applying a built-in class called is full width. And why don't we add some color to it? So, and uh, let it be a primary color, uh, which is basically the same as in the top left corner over there. Make it look nicer. Uh, given that, I also want to create a, an input for our scores and. To do that, I create a new type called score, and score will be a discriminated union, and it can be either good or so-so or poor. Uh, so this is a discriminated union or a sum type, if you like. And now I can proceed with creating scores function for, for the input. And for that, we'll use also the level component from Bulma, this time applying a custom class called is mobile to make it more mobile friendly. And then within the level for each of the scores, I want to create a nested fu helper function. And it, this will output the item. And it will contain a single button. And for the button, we want to use an icon from the font awesome icon library. And for those of you who don't know what font awesome is, this is a huge collection of ready to use icons within your app. So I can type in, this is also uh, within the uh, Bulma bindings, uh, Fulma bindings, so I can, uh, I have access to like all smileys or uh, all icons within, uh, within F-sharp. <coughs> all right, so this is 
uh, this is in, and I want to trigger that using item good and give it to my form at the beginning. All right, does it compile? Yep, that's right. Thank you. Okay, so this gives us a single button here, and uh, it's a bit small, so why don't we make the icon a bit bigger by using custom uh, built-in FA two times uh, class, and this gives us a nice bigger icon, and we can now reuse it for all our, of our scores. So I just uh, type in uh, item so-so, as well as item poor, uh, so this should give us three smileys right now, but they are all the same, so we want to distinguish between the scores. And for that purpose, let's create a function called score icon, and this will be a function from the score to, uh, to the smiley. And for good, we want to use, of course, the smile O, uh, but for the other cases, for so-so, uh, we want this to be the mech icon, and for poor, uh, this will be a very sad icon. It will be thrown. Okay, so I can now invoke the function here uh, based on our score. So this should, us give, this should give us three different smileys right now. And what else? I also want to add some colors to those icons. So why don't we create another function called score color? And for good uh, one, I want the is success color, which basically in Bulma means green. And for so so, this will be warning, so kind of a yellow. And for poor, this will be danger. Yeah, and uh, button color, score color of score. S color. All right. So we have our form in place. Slides are quite small right now, or whatever. Uh, we are ready to proceed to client side debugging section. And we'll see now how to bind our model to user interface using Elm architecture style and how to use various uh, tracing tools to see uh, if anything, when everything, anything goes wrong, like console trace or hot module replacement or other uh, Chrome dev tools like Redux with the awesome time travel debugger feature and as well as React dev tools because we use React as well. Uh, all right. So first, first thing I want to do is to actually uh, correspond to our model, and to do that, I'll create a record type for our model. So we have comment of type string. Uh, then we've got name of type string. And for the score, we want to use score, but this will be optional, because uh, initially we can have no score. And uh, for message type, I want to create uh, each, uh, for each of the field, a corresponding uh, message, so for, we'll get set comment for the comment, then we have set name for the name, and set score for our score. So those set comment and set name message uh, are like uh, for every keystroke when you type in your app, this message is triggered and uh, you, can, you can see the result afterwards. Uh, so for our initial model right now, we want to uh, create the record uh, and uh, the comment will initially be empty, same story with name, and for the score, we've got none. And we won't need to trigger any comment initially, so I'll just type in none for now. And I want to handle the uh, update uh, function as well. So whenever set comment comes in, I want to output the same model, but changing the comment field to the comment that, was, uh, that came <coughs> together. And same story for set score. I want to do model with score set to sum score. Okay, and uh, now I want to also add one more uh, namespace opening. This will be Fable Core JS Interop before I can bind to my fields. And one more helper function called onChange. This will take an action function, and we want to do onChange, trigger the action on a target value. So what this gives us is uh, those strange operators over the here that you can see is basically mean uh, bypass type, uh, the compilation phase of Fable to JavaScript uh, because this is not yet bound in the Fable and we cannot use that uh, in uh, static typing way. Uh, so that's just uh, what I need to 
to bind my fields. And I can now proceed to binding the command. Uh, so we'll type in the that the text area default value should be bound to our model command. And for the uh, props, I need to say that whenever it changes, I want to dispatch set comment. So I do set comment compose with dispatch. And save story for the name. I want to bind to uh, input default value model name and input props will be basically on change. I want to set name and dispatch. All right, so this uh, binds our uh, comment and name fields. And I want to do uh, pretty the same for the scores. So let's bind to on click. Uh, and whenever on click is uh, triggered on the button, I want to uh, dispatch set score message passing in the current score. Uh, I also want to somehow show that uh, score is selected. And I'll do that uh, by uh, not coloring the buttons. So whenever the, bu the score is not selected, I'll make, make it just white. And to do that, I need to slightly change my function over here. Uh, so to type in that explicitly. And what else I want to do is to pass in the second parameter the whole model of the application. And first, the pattern match on the selected score. And whenever that's, uh, that's none, I just want white color, meaning that nothing is selected. And whenever it is selected, but uh, it's different than uh, the current process score. I also want to use white. And otherwise, we'll just uh, default to the colors that we had before. And I also need to pass the model to, to the invocation of the function. So what we have now is that whenever I click on an icon, it, uh, it lights up with the selected color. Uh, OK, so now I want to refresh my app and open up the console. And uh, as you can see, if I click, uh, you click a selected uh, score and type in some comment, uh, for each of the message incoming, we can see a trace in the console together with uh, the updated state. So this is pretty cool when you want to debug what happens in your app. And let's see what happens if I try to fill in the name field. As you can see, we've got uh, a lot of errors. And they say that for set name message, uh, there is a problem in program update. Function. So if we just go to the update function, uh, we'll see that we didn't handle properly the set name um, message. So let's do that right now. So for set name, I also want to change the model and give the name. So hopefully right now, uh, when the app refreshes, I can fill that in and everything's fine. OK, and uh, next, uh, what I want to show is the hot module replacement. So hot module re replacement from uh, Webpack basically allows to preserve state whenever the user UI changes. So for example, if I delete for a second the name field and then bring it back, uh, the model is preserved. So I get it filled in with my, uh, with my model. Uh, so that's pretty cool. And what else I want to show is the Redux uh, Chrome Dev tool. And I probably need to uh, refresh my page. And what it gives us is the awesome time travel debugger. Whenever I click the icons, it records the history. So I can proceed to the beginning of the history and see what happened in my, within my app together with all the comments. So this is pretty nice. And uh, what else? I also show you the React DevTools because the React is used uh, underneath. And uh, whenever I change my score, you can see that corresponding classes uh, are highlighted, those changes. Right, so uh, in this section, we saw how we can uh, use um, uh, binding from the model to user interface using ARM um, architecture style. And we saw various uh, tools uh, for tracing, like console traits, uh, hot module replacement, or Chrome Dev tools that we can also use. So now let's see how to talk to the server side. <coughs> and once again, we'll use Fable remoting for that purpose. We'll see how we can implement on server uh, handling new uh, responses and .NET Watch uh, tool will uh, will be working in the background and recompile the app whenever it sees some changes. And then we'll see how we can trigger calls from client to the server side. Uh, okay, so uh, first thing I want to do is to add 
a new message. So whenever I click submit button, I want the submit message to be triggered. And I want to reflect that within my model, uh, passing in the loading flag, which says uh, whether the model should be loading and the user interface should, be, uh, should reflect that. So initially, of course, loading will be set to false. And whenever the submit uh, message arrives, I want to set uh, the loading flag to uh, true. And what now? I need to bind my submit button. And whenever button on click, but whenever the button is clicked, I want to dispatch submit message. And uh, what else? I want to also want to show that button is loading. So this is also a built-in uh, Bulma. And what this gives us is that whenever I click submit button now, I can see that the button is loading. OK, um, so let's now proceed to actually talk to the server. And what I want to do is to move type score to our shared module, because server will make use of that as well. And on the, in the shared module, I also want to add new type called vote that will correspond to a single vote that was given. And this will be, of course, of type string. Then we've got name of type string and score of type score. And I also want to add voting results type, which will uh, consist of all the voting uh, of, the, of all the results of the voting that we applied. So for comments, I want to have for each name and comment a tuple. And this will be within an array. And for scores, we'll just use map of score to int. So for each score, we have a counter how many scores were selected. And I also want to create a new uh, protocol. And let's call it voting protocol uh, with a single method called vote, which takes a vote and returns async of voting results. And now I'm ready to implement that on the server side. And to do this, I'll first create an in-memory database, if you like. So I just uh, go to collections concurrent and use concurrent back for votes. And what this means is that it's basically thread safe. And now I need to create count votes function, which returns voting results. And first thing I want to do is to filter out uh, votes that either have uh, empty name or empty comments. So I'm not really interested in those. So I want to filter whenever name is empty uh, or score or sorry comment is empty and now i can create comments from that so vs goes to array map and we select the tuple of name and comment so these are our comments and for scores we want to do pretty the same so we just count by uh count by our scores and then invoke map of array. And we're ready to create our record. Comments equal comments and scores equal scores. And now we can actually create the vote function, which takes a single vote and returns an async of voting results. And this will be an async computation expression where we want to return the uh, result of count votes. Uh, but first, we want to also add to the concurrent dictionary current vote. And why don't we also uh, add a fake sleep to just mimic a uh, background process uh, for a second? And now, given this implementation, I can switch from counter protocol to uh, voting protocol. So let's remain that, rename that, and use vote function for that. And this uh, implements uh, voting protocol on the server side. And as you can see in the background, the server, Suave server, uh, is uh, recompiled and restarted. So those changes are already reflected on the server side. And let's do this on the client side right now. So for the API, I want to use voting protocol instead of counter protocol. And let's add the results to our model. And so those will be voting results option, because initially they will be empty. And also got results message of type result of voting result and exception. So whenever it succeeds, we get voting results back. And 
uh, otherwise we've got an exception. And I need to initialize the results to none for the initial model. And uh, in the update, I need to handle uh, got results. And whenever they are OK, so it means they succeeded, I want to set the loading flag to false, as well as, the, as bind to the results field. And uh, that's it. And whenever we've got some kind of an error, for now, we'll just ignore the error message and set the loading flag to false. So to make it to make things easier, uh, I also need to react to um, to the message regarding our comments. So whenever a message is submit, I want to trigger a comment match message with submit. I want to trigger comment of async, uh, giving in our server API vote method, and I need to create a helper function in a minute make vote from our model, and then we want to bind that to uh, OK and got results, and same story with error. And whenever the message is any different than submit, I just default to comment none because we won't need it. And uh, let's create the make vote function, uh, which takes our model of type model and returns vote. And this will be for the uh, mainly copying in the fields from our model to the vote. And for the score, however, it won't be so easy because the types differ. Uh, so for in the model, we have got an option and we don't want an optional in our vote. So we just need to default and let's default to good, which is better for me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, given that, uh, let's see what happens if I fill in the form. Great talk. Uh, now I click submit. It goes loading, sends a request to the server. The response comes back. The uh, loading flag is set to false, and I've got the results in my model. However, we cannot see them because I haven't done anything with the uh, UI yet. Uh, so let's change that, and let's uh, create a new function called uh, form box, which will correspond to our form uh, for now, and a new box for the results. So this will be results box, and it will get the voting results as an argument. And for now, let's just create an empty box. And then within the container box, we can pat pattern match on uh, our results from the model. And whenever they are sum, or just uh, some results, I want to output the results box passing in the results and otherwise we just default to the form box passing in model and dispatch dispatch okay so what this gives us is that whenever uh, the app refresh whenever i type in again great talk uh, after the response is back we get an empty box which was uh, what i expected uh, so let's now create some user interface for the results and i just copy in the UI from our scores field. And I won't need a button, so let's just make it a single uh, div. And I can remove this one and invoke those within the box. Oops. OK, so uh, this should hopefully give us uh, the three smileys over here. And for each smiley, I want to count the votes. and. Uh, default arc. I want to try find within the map current score process results scores and default to zero because if I can't find them, I want to default to zero. And uh, let's put it within an uh, H2, uh, so heading uh, with a single string, string count. And this should give us uh, results for current uh, votes. So for we have two smiles right now. And let's also output the comments. And to do that, we'll just use another built-in uh, Bulma com component called content. And we want the size to be of small. And within that, we'll just use an unordered list. And for, uh, for then, for each name and comment in our uh, results comments, we want to output a list item. And within that list item, I want first to show uh, the comments. So to do that, I just 
uh, outputs a single string and then format uh, the command. And afterwards, I also want to give the name. Uh, so as you can see, there are the comments over here. And then we just use a single st string for the comment, for the name. And that's pretty it. So we should now get uh, the name of the commenter as well. OK, so this is uh, how we uh, talk to the server side uh, using Fable Remoting. We saw how the server recompiled the app on the server side and how to trigger calls from client to server. Uh, let's now proceed to actually deploying the app. And we want to bundle it up uh, and uh, create a Docker image and then push it to Azure using web, uh, web app for containers. And if I go to my build script, uh, you can see that there are already a couple of uh, targets uh, there. And I want to set the Docker user as well as default image name to save uh, demo lambda days. And copy one of our targets to uh, deploy to Docker Hub. And for the deploy, this will be just a single step. This will be invoking Docker with uh, the push subcommand. And given the uh, full name of the Docker image, I can trigger deploy to Docker Hub. And I want to change that in my, in my build. And now I can invoke it so that it builds deploy. It runs in the background. And while that's happening, uh, let's see what, what we've got here in the chain. So we, there are some boring targets like uh, clean uh, the folders and install dependencies. Then we want to build. Uh, which is different from the run, as you can see here. I want to go into the details because of the time right now. Uh, but for run, we want to enter the development mode. But for build, we actually build for the production right now. And then we bundle up just copying files from the, to the deploy directory. And then we create a Docker image from that and deploy to Docker Hub using uh, Docker push. And for the Docker file, this is uh, really simple. We just based on Microsoft.NET runtime uh, image, uh, which is... Uh, uh, like 90 megs uh, or so. Uh, then we copy uh, the contents of deploy directory to the root directory within the image. Uh, the working directory will be from the server. We expose port 8085, and the entry point is just .NET with the binary. Uh, so as you can see, currently it's building the Docker image. And I also will have to uh, create actually the repository for that in the Docker Hub. so that it can push there. As you can see, it's currently not pushed. Uh, OK, let's wait a bit for the Docker image to build. And while that's happening, why don't we go to the last slide? Uh, so in this talk, we saw how to build a simple app uh, using safe stack and f -sharp. But if you'd like to learn more, uh, there are cool resources like uh, Safe Bookstore, for example, is an example of a more complex app uh, showing also how to use a test in F-Sharp. Uh, then there's also Safe Nightwatch, which uh, shows the same story for React, React Native on mobiles. And Safe Conf, Conf Planner, which uh, combines Safe Stack together with SQLS and even sourcing. And I hope you like the talk, and I encourage you to try Safe Stack so that you share your success story soon. Uh, the slides are available at the given URL. Let's see what happens now. It should be pushed in a second to the uh, to Docker Hub, let's create quickly web app for containers here. Just enter the name. Uh, use existing resource group and configure it using public Docker Hub repository. And it's already pushed. So I can now create, create the container in Azure. Uh, it should take a minute or two. I know we, uh, we are after the time, but just bear with me for a minute. <laughs> OK, deployment is in progress. Uh, you can see I have 44 euros remaining, so let's hope this will be just enough. Uh, and what I want to do is when the deployment succeeds start right now, I want to grab the URL and share it with you using QR code generator. And I'll just download the image for that so that you can scan with your mobile phone uh, mobile phones and rate my talk. Uh, so this is it. 
please tell me if you can scan it. It should be loading uh, for now because the container needs to spin up. But now, whenever that, oh, it's already there. Okay, so I'm waiting for your votes. I just, I just put great from my mobile phone. <laughs> And let's see if we get some votes from you. Okay, so let's make a good score. It was really awesome. And it's me from my laptop. Let's click Submit. Oh, we've got pretty a lot of comments right now. So that's pretty cool. Thank you a lot. And that will conclude my, uh, my session today.